Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's and Mariana's Coffee. Good evening, half a day, and Tarot Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Dan Shore. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. Could the sun soon power half of our local power needs? Also, tonight, a Tinian historian receives a very special recognition. Also, Guam paddlers arrive ready to compete. Stay with us. These stories and more are next. We can't wait to welcome you back. Beginning October 16th, the doors of Miyako will reopen. Alongside the tranquil ocean and vibrant gardens inside the former Hyatt, Miyako will offer two weekday seatings for a special Japanese lunch buffet. Make your reservations Monday through Friday by calling 670-488-1000 and indulge in authentic dishes, including fresh, never frozen salmon and tuna. Make new memories at an old favorite. Make it special. Make it Miyako. I love Marianne's coffee. Come join me for a cup. I think you would be really happy. To all beef patty special sauce, but it's cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. It's not not a Big Mac, it's the Chicken Big Mac. Get it while you can. The humanities are all academic disciplines that study all aspects of human society, culture, and language. It includes the studies of philosophy, religion, history, literature, performance, and the visual arts. It is the exploration of the differences between us and the similarities that tie all of humanity together. Here on Saipan, we are a confluence of diverse cultural backgrounds. At the Governor's Humanities Awards in Kensington Hall at the Kensington Hotel, we meet to celebrate those in the CNMI who have made distinguished contributions to the advancement of the humanities. Gretchen Smith, Chair of the Humanities Council. We're here tonight to celebrate some icons in the culture of the CNMI. We're here to celebrate their contributions to the community here as part of the Humanities Council. Um, and yeah, we're here to have fun. So the Governor's Humanity Awards every year for at least the last five years, at minimum at the last, the last five years, is a time to celebrate people who contribute to the humanities. And there are a number of uh, categories. There's the Lifetime Achievement Award. There's the uh, Outstanding Teacher in the Classroom and Non-Classroom Setting, Preservation of, cult of History, you know, those kinds of categories. And we award one person from a slew of nominees every year to receive the award. And do we know who that is? No, we do not. I don't know who's going to win tonight. 
Bob Coldine, along with Dan Nielsen and Leonard Coffer, was part of the original NMI chapter of the Humanities Council in 1990. And then we hired Ron Barino, who was my neighbor in, right. in, in Chuuk. We were both at Truck High School at that time. And so I knew him and Dan knew him. And they were looking for somebody who was literate, who could sell the program, and Ron was the perfect person. So he was the first executive director. And so from there on, it grew. Among the humanities are the performing arts, represented this evening by Louis John Castro. <laughs> and Jessica Tenorio. The Governor's Humanity Award winners are Dr. Teresa Ariola for research and publication in the humanities, Elsie San Nicholas Johnson, Outstanding Humanities Teacher, Classroom, Jonas Barcinas, Outstanding Humanities Teacher, Non-Classroom, John Castro for Preservation of CNMI History, Dina Caliga for Preservation of Traditional Cultural Practices, and for Lifetime Achievement in the Humanities, Don Farrell. Don Farrell is a distinguished author and educator from Tinian who wrote among his many books, Saipan, A Brief History, and A History of the Mariana Islands. They're used by scholars, the public, and by the CNMI public school system. It's kind of hard for me to get started. You know, I've told a lot of stories, and my, I, never, nobody ever said I was brief about anything. <laughs> Scott Russell once said when they asked me to write a brief history of something that Don can't write a brief anything. <laughs> I believe it's true. I wish Scott was here. Right? And I was so proud of him when he received a lifetime achievement. Uh, and there are so many people here that uh, I owe this award to. So many people that have uh, contributed to my efforts to try to record and preserve the history of the Mariana Islands. And thank you so very much for being here tonight and making this award so very special. While many companies and individuals have installed solar systems, the technology has not been put to use at any sort of scale by the Commonwealth Utility Corporation. But that could change. The power company says they're working towards a solar farm that could provide up to half the island's power needs. Yeah, I'd like to share with you some uh, good news. Uh, we uh, just awarded the contract to GHD. It's fully um, executed contract now. And the final signatures was yesterday. And this is for the 20 megawatt solar farm, and battery in energy storage uh, system. GHD is an energy consulting firm with offices in Saipan, Guam, and San Francisco. This was uh, funded by a grant, and it was a $645,000 grant. How much power will we generate? It's 20 megawatts. Now, we won't generate that. This is only the design. It's not construction, but the design. The construction will be a future project. The, the solar farm will actually produce the power, uh, electrical power, through a solar grid uh, over several, you know, hundreds of acres or uh, of land that will help us lower our dependence on fossil fuels. Watson says the farm's 20 megawatts of power will generate 50% of the energy used by Saipan daily. He claims that the land to be used for the farm has been identified and that it will be on public land. He then added this. And I would like to, in addition to this, uh, I'd like to share some more positive news that will help us uh, on power outages. And the CUC uh, recently secured $3.4 million dollars a grant from the U.S. Department of Energy grant for a grid resilience project. This project, according to Watson, is to help prevent outages and enhance resilience of the electrical grid. Part, part of this, we basically have several 
individual projects that will in, entails, and we've prioritized them. Uh, one is we have an outdated STATA system, that's the Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition, that for the power plant. We are uh, in the process of replacing that and upgrading it. Uh, the other is, uh, you've probably seen concrete poles that, you know, we're replacing the wooden poles. That will also be included as part of this project. This is a five-year project. We're very fortunate to, to get this grant. It's uh, really done help. A newly hired law clerk found guilty of sexual assault by a Commonwealth jury is asking for new lawyers as he appeals a verdict that could send him to jail for years. In Superior Court today, via Zoom conferencing, William Abrazinskas, a former court clerk who was convicted for sexually assaulting a fellow court employee, filed three motions for the judge to consider. The first was the motion to withdraw from his present counsel, Charlene Brown and Carrie Comstock. After brief discussion among defense and prosecution attorneys Francis Demipon and Chester Hines, Judge Pro Tem Elise Ariarte of Guam granted the request. The judge found that when appeals of convictions are filed, a new attorney is most often appointed. She therefore granted that request. But the other motions of bail modification and a motion for acquittal, along with a date for sentencing, have been tabled until new representation is assigned. This week on Capitol Hill, senators voted to confirm new board members to assist with tourism, elections, and with casinos. Mr. Dwayne L. Maratita is to serve as a member of the Marianas Visitors Authority Board of Directors representing the 1st Senatorial District. Mr. Kurt John O. Maratita will serve as a member of the Commonwealth Election Commission representing the 1st Senatorial District. And, after several glowing public statements of support and by a majority vote, Mr. Tomas A. Manglona was approved to serve as a member of the Commonwealth Casino Commission, representing the 1st Senatorial District. I think, um, like I said, I'm very much appreciative with the appointment by our Honorable Governor and Honorable Lieutenant Governor Apatang for their confidence. Uh, as uh, everyone knows, I've served uh, the Commonwealth government for more than 20 years and with my uh, uh, business background for, uh, run, I mean, running a business for the past 30 years. I think uh, that's what uh, uh, made them have a confidence in me. Next, the Guam paddlers arrive and boy are their arms tired. Welcome to Saipan and a Humanities Council program preview. Stay with us, my man. That goes with your flow. Get unlimited local talk, text, and data at the most affordable rate with unlimited flow postpaid. Location, location, location. Office space on Capitol Hill available now at the Hermosa Vista Business Park. With natural light and ocean views, it's the perfect place for creative professionals. So upgrade your life and your working environment. Schedule an exclusive showing now. Call us at 670-483-4750 or email hvsaipan at gmail.com. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about a hundred eggs under the cover of darkness. 
She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. The airport is a good place to see who's here as they take their first step on Saipan. Let's take a look. Clarissa Guerrero works for IT in Neon Guam and is here on a work trip. I'm here for our Lunch and Learn uh, segments uh, regarding our Ask Blue uh, Enterprise uh, Managed Services uh, launch for, with our, for our data center and uh, services between Guam and Saipan. As Guerrero shifts between islands, she says she is grateful for the opportunity to be here. This being my third time out here, uh, I, I've enjoyed it since, since the very first time. So, um, you know, being out in Guam and, and just having um, more to do, it's actually very nice to come and have, you know, more relaxing um, scenery around here. Uh, and and um, the food is amazing uh, here in Saipan and the people and the hospitality as well. We've welcomed paddlers from the Marshall Islands earlier this week. Now we welcome paddlers from Guam. It's Kia's first time in Saipan. She says Team Napu has been gearing up for the Micronesia Cup competition. So we actually went to the World Championships in Hawaii before this, and that was in August. So we started training for that maybe a year and a half ago, and then we just continued for this. As an avid paddler, this is what Kia looks forward to. I just want to feel the water, you know, and see if it's like similar to home. I'm sure it is, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the competition and meeting everyone. I know we always meet in the other micro cups, and it was never here for a while, so yeah, I'm excited to see everyone again. Donovan Marbibi from Tao Tao Galaidi has competed in micro cup Palau in the past, but this is his first time here. I'm from Dedido. Dedido Rules. And uh, do you have any uh, family here? Uh, no, this is just me. And I guess this is family. <laughs> Being here for just a few minutes, this is his impression of Saipan. Looks exactly like Guam, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Opponents can be friends just as much as teammates are. Marbibi looks forward to the camaraderie. Just making friends with every team. I just want to get to know everyone. Rokin John Kitocho Shionko from Marneran Galaidi says his roots may be tied to this land. It's his second time in Saipan and first time competing in Micro Cup. I know I'm a Tudela Pangolinan, but that's like way back up with my great grandmother. Other than that, just here to enjoy the Marianas family. Shianko says he looks forward to meeting other teams, enjoying the sport, and getting out in the water. See you on the water. Have a great day and have some fun. Friendly competition for the three day Micro Cup Va'a event has started today and will be ongoing throughout the weekend. Welcome to Saipan. Viva CCG! Choo Viva Apple! Viva Mary Choo Choo! CNMI history at your fingertips. This week, your humanities host, Catherine Perry, delves into the digital archive drawer. In this digital age, information is at the tip of our fingers. Thinking Future Forward, our history in the Northern Mariana Islands is archived and available online through the Humanities Council. Roberto Santos, Archive Manager, spearheads digitizing materials. Perpetuating our existence and our identity and our culture is preserving it in these narratives. We come from oral tradition, so our stories are so often orally told or enacted in dance, in storytelling and... Um, other types of performance, but this digital archive is another great reason to supplement that and back it up with um, digital content and digital references in to suit a Western world and in, an in increasingly westernized world mm. as well. Moments recorded on photos and other mediums can tell so much about what life was like back then. Everything about that content also gives you so much more information. The fashion that you see in the photo, the environment, the condition of the environments around them, if there's architecture, if there are buildings, the architecture, the cars, 
Um, you almost don't really need anybody to tell you what era that was if you can see enough details about what's in there. And then, of course, the expression on their faces and what they were experiencing in that moment. It's a, a whole narrative can unfold in those photos. So. Episodes from Your Humanities Half Hour, hosted by Catherine Perry, airs every Thursday night. If you missed it, don't worry, it replays on Saturday at 7 p.m. right here on Channel 2. And coming up in sports, the Micro Cup begins at Crown Plaza Beach. The water is fine. Let's paddle. Fast, fun, and easy. That's how your home Wi-Fi should be. So start with an internet plan that fits your budget. Introducing your home Wi-Fi starter pack, also known as WISP. Enjoy up to 25 megabits per second for as low as $35 a month, plus a free router with your wireless subscription. That's hours of movies, games, social media, and more endless fun. Get your Wi-Fi starter pack today only at Docomo Pacific. Better together. Additional conditions may apply. If you're a person with a disability in the CNMI, you have certain rights that protect your ability to vote. This video contains some information about your rights and some resources available to you in protecting those rights. What are some of your voting rights as a person with a disability? You have the right to vote regardless of your disability. You have the right to cast your vote privately without disclosing your vote to anyone. But you also have the right to ask for assistance as needed. Polling place workers should be ready and available to assist and accommodate your needs. CNMI law requires that you must be registered to vote in the CNMI. You can vote if you are a citizen or national of the United States, at least 18 years of age on the date of the election, domiciled in the CNMI, a resident of the CNMI, and have resided in the Commonwealth for 120 days, are not serving a sentence for a felony, have not been declared by the court of unsound mind and have registered to vote at least 60 days before the election. As a voter with a disability, you have the right to vote in an accessible voting place. That means you can get from your car through the door to cash your ballot without physical barriers or impediments. Under the CNMI law, any voter who needs help in casting a ballot is entitled to request for assistance. A poll supervisor or the executive director of the Commonwealth Election Commission can provide assistance at the polling place, or you can exercise your right to curbside vote. However, whether you vote at curbside or not is your choice. No poll worker can force you to vote curbside. If you are unable to mark your ballot, you may select up to two people to help you cast your vote, except that they cannot be your employer or your employer's agent. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 requires public entities to provide progress access, reasonable modification of policy, auxiliary aids and service where necessary to afford an individual with a disability an equal opportunity to participate in and enjoy the benefits of the services, program or activity being conducted by the public entity. Our primary goal is to have 100% participation of eligible voters in all elections, 100% polling place accessibility, and options for all voters who seek independent and private voting. If you want to know more about your voting rights, please contact the Northern Marianas Protection and Advocacy Systems Incorporated at 670-235-7273 or 74. Or you can simply visit our website at www.nmposse.org. This video was brought to you by the Administration for Community Living and does not necessarily reflect their official views.
Buenas sports fans. Buenas sports fans, the Micronesian Cup launched this morning with V1 races in front of the Crown Plaza Resort. Let's dig our paddles into this story. Paddlers from around the Pacific set up their boats and teams and paddles at the Crown Plaza this morning as the Micro Cup kicked into gear. The marshals are here, Guam is here, and NMI is here. Great atmosphere and not many places better to paddle than in the Saipan Lagoon. First races of the day, the V1 women's. They are all by themselves in this event. Canoes are light. You need to power it and steer it yourself in this 500 meter sprint that starts in the south and heads to the north with the finish in front of the crowd at Crown Plaza. First race of the day, one in strong fashion. I was just trying not to go too crooked. <laughs> But it's a lot more windy than yesterday when I got to try the course out. But it, I think halfway through the wind died a little bit, so I was able to focus on paddling instead of staying in my lane. So that was nice. Could you tell? Did you know you had a big lead, or is it hard to tell? Um, I try not to look around, so I wasn't sure. I could just hear people screaming on the beach, so I was like, okay, just you're almost there. Just get to the end. All right, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Second heat, still windy. Another exciting finish for those on the water and on the shore. Kind of windy out there. What do you do when it's windy like that? Uh, just sit present and adjust. I just wait for the next slide, or just aim for the next slide and uh, pay attention to what I'm doing. Kind of slow it down a little. Uh, yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Racing happening all weekend down at the Crown Plaza Beach. Juniors, Masters, men and women, V1, V6, and V12 sprints and distance races to check it out. Hey, golfers, come north and practice your game at the Marianas Driving Range. New Year's local specials. 10-piece coupon books available for just $60. That's a $10 savings. Want to get really good? Come work on your swing every day for just $99 per month. It's our practice pass, and you're going to love it. Grab your passes and go straight to the range. You can social distance and chip all at the same time, and the views are free. Reserve now at MarianasTrekking.com. You can pay online. Open seven days a week. Here's the weather. Tonight will be mostly cloudy with a 60% chance of isolated thunderstorms with gusts of wind up to 30 miles per hour. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a 60% chance of scattered showers also Highs of 87 and lows around 78. And the wet weather is predicted to continue through Sunday as well. But the sun sets tonight at 5.55 p.m. and rises tomorrow at 6.09 a.m. just in time for the 7 a.m. opening ceremony of the micro games at Crown Plaza Beach. So bring an umbrella, Saipan, and root your favorite and least favorite paddlers on. And I will see you in the water and in the rain.
Well, that's news, sports, and weather. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful weekend, NMI, and stay dry if possible. But if you're paddling, stay wet.